Okay. Good to go. It's my baby elephant sound. Mm. Uh, did you happen to see any preview for the Dumbo movie that's coming out? No. You could just like take a knife and stab me in the heart, and it's basically the equivalent for me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Wow. Dumbo kills me emotionally. It's like Bambi. It just... <sighs> I can't. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I know the story of Dumbo, so I'll have it's to look a back up. poor little baby elephant with big ears who gets t- taken away from his mama. Th- and like, and oh, I can't. I can't talk about it. Okay, I, that's we, enough. All right. I, I, the preview came on for Captain Marvel, and I sat there with blocking my ears, looking down and just like humming so that I could not take in <laughs> what was happening. <clears throat> anyway, awesome. speaking of Dumbo, we're talking about building your... <laughs> and what then is... five, four, three, you don't say two. And we're live! Stop saying we're, we're not... live. We're not live. <laughs> we're, well, the recording is live. Nope. We're live recording. We are currently recording this. It is not being broadcasted live anywhere. So this right. the point of saying live is mute. Sorry. There's mute. somebody at my door. Oh. Oh, it's FedEx. FedEx. How dare they interrupt our recording? Jerks. <clears throat> Please hold for this brief dance break. So we, I was at uh, – we took Alice yesterday to Little Jim. If we're recording, that's fine. Um, okay. Uh, and she – there was like music playing and she was just like sitting holding a ball. And I like – you know, like other kids were like jumping and bouncing and stuff. And I looked over at her and she was just like doing that like like – like head bobbing thing because like i was doing it i was just like you know feeling the music it was like kids bop or something and she's just like like doing that it was super adorable anyway there you go listeners perfect okay all right you ready to jump into our topic yeah should we let's let's actually um let's actually do a re restart here now and in five four three Okay, Take it away, Danielle. Sorry. Okay, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is only my first cup of coffee today. How about that? That's fantastic. I'm just this wired and excited all the time. Yeah, that's true. You, <laughs> very, you very much are. I've got tea. I've got peppermint tea because my belly is is on the fritz, as we say. That's sad. I'm sorry your belly's on the fritz. Oh, it's fine. It's just part of what my belly does. But I read a thing that peppermint tea helps, so we're trying we're trying that this week to see if that does anything good. I heard peppermint tea helps. Yeah, yeah it's not going to hurt, so I just want no. <laughs> no to one, so. one of my clients hates all mint. He was telling me this. It's really interesting. He hates all mint. He just like can't. He's like, I don't do mint toothpaste. I don't do oh. gum. I don't do. Uh, yeah, I was like, think about that. Think about that. Wow. I didn't think about it from the toothpaste aspect. Speaking of, I have to go to the dentist today. So shall we record a podcast? Yes. Okay. Wait, I have to burp. Okay. Would you like to start off? Go ahead. You start off. Yeah. Um, This is... This is a this is going to be like a good episode filled with just like lots of little nuggets. So I need everybody to like buckle your seatbelt and just get like in the zone here because we're going to move through a lot of stuff very quickly because when it comes to today's episode it's all about hiring your wedding pros. And that yeah. is a, that's a lot of stuff, right? Like you are creating a team of people who are going to take care of you on your wedding day. And like that that's that might sound like a daunting task, but um, the wizard Danielle Pasternak over here uh, has created a lovely template that we're going to follow and talk through a whole bunch of different things from the big stuff you need to do all the way down to the nitty gritty. And, and we're going to go from there. So yeah. you want to start breaking it down for us, Danielle? I do. Break it down I sh- the topic, not not breaking, not breaking it down. No, you know? I should not break it down. Wiki, Don't wiki, break, wiki. Break it down. Wiki, wiki, wiki. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Good. 
So just to give you, um, you know, a little behind the scenes uh, thing too, Dan and I actually already recorded this episode. We, um, we were going through it. I had outlined it a completely different way. <clears throat> excuse me and it was just not working and nope. Dan and I realized that like the information we were sharing wasn't super helpful as as and not as helpful as we thought it could be so we actually totally stopped um we we took a few <laughs> days to like reconfigure it and we're back and we're doing it for you and I just like that's just like a little behind the scenes stuff because I think it but a I love behind the scenes any type of information so if you anybody out there is like me you're like Ooh, very cool yeah but I'm so excited because I'm really happy um we rethought this and I'm really happy with how it's laid out now so yeah. I'm excited to dive in yeah so, that and also we we may have taken just a, a little bit too long talking about the the planner aspect of things and the photographer aspect of things That's so true. it was it was an uneven skew so we're we're reeling ourselves back in here and trying it to was, be as unbiased as possible yeah it's 45 <laughs> minutes of us talking about planning and photography and then being like oh we have a lot of other stuff to talk about at, at one point danielle's looking at me like okay wrap it up come on we gotta keep going <laughs> Oh, that was brutal, but yeah. So we uh, we are we are always uh, um, we are always looking to bring you guys um, stuff that really helps you. And Dan and I are very much ones to recognize when like something isn't going right or it's not quite working. So we are um, we're hoping you enjoy this bit of of topic and information that we've got for you today. And apparently, I'm learning that my words are not coming to me this morning. So let's just simplify the vocabulary and jump right in. So. I'm I'm like setting I'm resetting the dials on my brain to like easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as a planner, what um part of what I do for my clients is I help them sort of navigate the process of building their wedding pros, right? Building their whole team of people that they're going to be working with for their wedding day. And what I have found and through, uh, you know, just a bunch of different educational aspects that I've done is there's a really good way to go about it that makes a lot of sense and that keeps things um, easy for you. And yep. um, so there's like a hierarchy. Now, obviously, you can always work out of order. And if there's something that is top priority to you, then that makes sense that that would be top priority in how you go about finding that vendor. But if you're just like, you know what, we just need some sort of blueprint to get started. This is where I want to start with it for you. So, so you want to start, and this is assuming you're at the beginning, you might be in the beginning, middle or end, but let's just assume you're at the beginning of things for right now. So you want to start by choosing your big picture pros. And big picture people are the ones that are the vendors and the companies and the people that can only take on one wedding either per day or per weekend. So they're super limited when it comes to their time. They're people that you usually have a little bit more of a personal connection with. You're working with a little bit more on one. So we're yep. talking about people like your photographer mm -hmm. versus your the person who's going to be doing your, um, your cake, right? Like you're working with them on two very different levels. Right. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh, my God. I'll take off. Outtake. Um, one of the things that you said was like working with people who uh, might do only one wedding in a day. And we'll get into this a little bit more later. But like florists, cake decorators, bakers, all those things, they're going to do – they may do many weddings in a day. Now, that's not to say that uh, photographers who – you know, many photographers will do more than one wedding in a weekend. Uh, if it's a single person, I mean, you know, generally speaking, most wedding photographers are at home Monday through Friday. Um, and, uh, you know, it keeps it super simple. Sorry, someone just called me on the phone. Um, man. Okay. Sorry. Um, it, one of the things that you'll notice is like, you know, some photographers may work uh, uh, multiple weddings in a weekend. Um, most of us photographers are home Monday through Friday, unless they have a wedding on Friday. Um, but so we have plenty of time to relax. Other people work, you know, regular Monday through Friday jobs. So um, it's not unusual to see some wedding pros who will work, you know, one, uh, you know, one wedding per day, but, may, you know, might have, you know, two or three per weekend. Now, I know like, I can do that, but I know Danielle, like you, you tend to have so much going on in a whole weekend that you tend to do just do one wedding per weekend. Exactly. It comes down to um, what you are needing that that service for, right? Because if you're booking out a venue that only books one wedding per weekend, then that very much limits um, their overall availability. I'm the same way. Right. Once I book that weekend. <clears throat> 
you can't, I don't book anything else for that weekend when it comes to another event. So that's what we're talking about. So it's not a matter of um, whether it's one day or for the weekend, but it's pros that once that date is booked, that date comes off the calendar. So that's where we start with. And obviously the biggest picture of these big picture items is your venue. Your venue is going to determine your overall location and the date because that's what you're working with. Now it could be venues where you're looking at a ceremony location and a reception location, whatever it is, those are your, your key things that you're going to start with. Yep. Right. Okay. From there, moving down our list of big picture pros, I'm, a huge advocate that the next person you should hire is your planner or coordinator for the day. And this is the person that's independent from the venue, not the same thing as a venue coordinator, but someone who you have on your team. And the reason I say to hire this person so far up is not because I'm biased, though I probably am to a certain extent, but... It's it's because you got the connections. Right. The planner's in that area, they know their area well, they know those vendors that they're working with, and they're going to be able to give you a leg up and and give you a ton of help when it comes to finding and booking the best of the best for the rest of the people that you want to have on your team. Now, you can certainly yep. go about doing this yourself, 100%, that is true. But if you have... Um, Uh, If you don't have the time and you don't have the resource to really dive in and Google the entire internet of weddings, this is where that investment goes a really long way. And the sooner you hire this person to have them on your team, the sooner they're able to provide a huge amount of value to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Okay. So moving right along, see how I kept that short and sweet this time, Dan? (laughs) I do. I see that. All right. I'm going to try to do the same. (laughs) Okay. So next thing we're going to talk about is photographer. Dan, take it away. Boom. Number three is photographer. And photographers tend to book up pretty quick because they are in that like top three. Um, I'm going to try to keep this pretty simple. So it's important that you like your photographer's pictures, right? Like it's important that you like the kind of pictures that they take. So you wouldn't go to a photographer and say, hey, this person shot this picture. Can you do this picture as well? Or like, can you shoot this way? You know, you want to find somebody who matches like the style and what you're looking for. That Whether that's like light and airy, um, you know, which you'll see as you kind of go through some wedding, uh, wedding photographers. There's like light and airy or all these different styles. Photojournalism, there's dark and moody, all, you know, film looks. So you want to find something that kind of speaks to you choose that and then the next step is is liking them as a person because as danielle said before this person may spend 8 10 12 16 hours with you on a wedding day and they're with you the entire time and their their energy is going to affect you because ultimately they're they may direct you and be in in the zone with you and in those like very little private moments and in those big moments um so liking them as a person is 100% you know, just as crucial as liking their pictures. Um, I'd say if you, if you start with those two things, you really can't go wrong. Um, is there anything else I'm missing? Anything else you think I should say about? Oh, I feel like we both have a ton to say about these two. (laughs) (laughs) We could probably just keep going back and forth. And that's why hiring a planner is this for this. And then that's, and then that helps with the photography for this. (laughs) Yeah. I think Uh, think probably the best way I can say, uh, is just to focus on those two things, liking their pictures and liking them as a person. So it's important to meet with them. It's important to look at a lot of photographers and meet with each one. Good to go. I'd say, yeah, I'd say there. Okay, so let's just like broaden that out a whole lot too. Um, Let's vague that up a little bit and even say that goes for just about everybody, right? That you want to like their product or service and then you also really need to like them as a person. Now, when it comes to the smaller items, like, you know, like this, we could just use a cake baker, for example. Yes, you want to work with like really good people who you get good vibes from. But if you don't get this like immediate best friend relationship with your baker, maybe that's not the end of the world as long as they still have a really awesome cake or cupcakes or whatever it is that they're providing for you, right? That kind of trumps that relationship. But with these big picture items, relationship becomes such a big um, factor in how you're going to be handling the rest of your engagement process, right? Because you're just going to be talking with these people a lot. So we talked about the venue, we talked about your planner, we talked about your photographer. Our next yep. few that we want to talk about um, that fall under these big picture ones that you want to knock out first are videography, which is super similar to photography in the sense of you want to have that good connection, you want to look at their work. Videographers have often a ton of videos up on their sites or on their socials that you can really view. Um, I usually say a good tell if someone, um, is really good at not just filming the day, but editing the day is if you're able to watch a complete stranger's video, um, from their wedding day and feel something 
For me, yeah. if you can like get me to cry, granted, I cry very easily. I <laughs> say that. But if you can like get get an emotion out of me when I have no idea who any of these people are that I'm watching, then to me, you're a pretty good storyteller because you've made me feel something. And that's what it's about. Yeah. Love um, it. So Love videographer, that. definitely on that list. Caterer is the next one on your list, especially if it's not, you know, wrapped into your venue itself. Um, yep. Catering will determine so many other things. And while it feels like, well, you know, that that doesn't seem like that big of a deal maybe yet, it kind of is because it's going to determine so many different things. There are so many different ways that a caterer will or won't work. And there is no just standard. This is what a caterer does, maybe outside of here's the food. But there are yeah. different levels, everything from a caterer that just shows up and hands you the food and leaves to ones that are there setting up tables and chairs and bringing linens and bringing every fork and doing a full service and there till the end of the night and cleaning everything up. So there's different yeah. and, and like a whole mix of ranges of things in between, right? Yep, totally. Uh, what's next, Dan? Do you want to take this next one? Yeah, music and entertainment. I mean, this is uh, I, I would say like I feel like videographer, caterer and music maybe are all like it like they're they're like tie. I feel like for right after, you know, uh, for right after photography, because mm -hmm. um, music music for us, for Rachel and I was like in the top three. Right. Like that guest experience. We need people to you know, we need somebody who's who can easily pack the dance floor. Um, so so you've got like a couple DJ band, band yep. live musicians, whatever yep. kind String of quartets. And it's not just for the reception either. This is this is for cocktail hour. This is potentially for the ceremony. So you might get a string quartet for the ceremony, um, or or maybe it's like a little I don't know jazz band for the the cocktail hour, or you know a little something or something for the cocktail hour. And then maybe you get just uh, an awesome DJ or a big twelve piece band for the reception. Um, as far as nitty gritty goes. Um, is there any like specifics that you want to talk about for like picking either one of those? As specifics, like what? I feel like you have something in mind. Well, with with bands, I think I think a lot of people are kind of hesitant, right? Like they're like, well, what if they don't play the the song that I like in a way that is like like the actual song, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's why you book a band. I think you book a band because of the energy that the band brings. That I, some of the best parties that I've ever seen were bands who who just had an amazing presence who got in the crowd who got people to be excited i think that's why you hire a band mm -hmm. um and and as far as djs go it's like a good dj is is kind of the same thing who he doesn't interact with the crowd but can read the crowd mm -hmm. uh and and adjust songs and and sh see when people need breaks and things like that so i think you know coming at it from that perspective um of saying you know a DJ can do this for me. A band can do this for me. Um, if you've always wanted a band, go to town. Yeah. And there's hybrid versions too. There's ways yep. that you can, we've seen it where there's been a DJ and one or two live musicians that play along with the song. So you still have the the original um, versions of the songs, but with the added yep. element of like that live music, which just adds a very cool energy to the whole room. And that's not to say as a DJ does not bring awesome energy. I've certainly seen DJs not bring awesome energy. That is for sure. <laughs> yeah. But I've seen a ton that just do an amazing job at like hyping people up and getting them on the dance floor and just providing exactly what it is that that group of people need. And it's, it's so cool to watch. But here's the thing. The best ones book fast. So that's yeah. why they're up here on this list. Yeah. I mean, asking them, asking a DJ what their approach is. Are, are you heavy handed? Do you, you know, s how much talking on the microphone do you do? Because um, if if you want somebody who's going to be kind of like a master of ceremonies and like, you know, interject things like put them up, put them up, things like that. That's one style. If you just want somebody who's going to play amazing, awesome music and just just be hands off through the night in terms of speaking and and bringing people up and just letting the music do that that's another style so just mm -hmm. asking them hey you know what what's your approach how do you handle the the that aspect of things okay the next thing is your officiant right your officiant is that person who is legally marrying you and your partner now if you're getting married in a church this might be an easy cross off the list because you know your pastor minister reverend father uh, rabbi whatever it is is going to take care of this for you however if you're getting married outside of the church or you're just not sure who's going to do this this is one of those people that while they may do several weddings in one day um, there ha there are a few that bounce around there is a certain time period that once they book that time 
uh, that time is kind of off that way. So that's why they're yep. up there. And we talk a lot um, about officiants and, and things to ask. Um, we did an episode um, a bit ago, episode number 40, um, which was Ceremony Talk. We Aww. brought on Lois Heckman, Lois. who was beautiful. So awesome. Shared so much cool stuff with us. So that I will put a link to that in the show notes, but it is episode 40. So so that is your big picture pros, your venue, your planner, your photographer, your videographer, your caterer, your music and entertainment, and your officiant, right? Now, obviously, yep. there may be other things that you're sprinkling in here. For, for some, you may like move stuff around. Totally fine. Again, just giving you a nice blueprint to start with and then to make yeah. your own. Okay, so that's our big okay. picture people. Now we move into the part where it's like design and your other people, right? The people that have the, that bring the look and the feel of the wedding. So yeah. these people are your florist, transportation, hair and makeup, any yep. rentals that you might need, specialty rentals, stationery, like your invites and things, your cake, um, whether you need additional staff like bartenders, servers, babysitters, valet people, whatever it is, lighter, lighting people, draping all that stuff, photo booths, magicians, yeah. cigar magicians. rolling people. <laughs> so it, <laughs> All it, the th things. The, yeah, these are the other things. The ones that you're able to book um, uh, that, that take on more weddings, like a florist, for example, usually can take up, up to like three, four, depending on their size of their staff, in one day. Um, so while it's still important to book them as early as you can, it's something that you want to book those other things first. Now, that said, if flowers are like the most important thing to you, then that's probably a lot higher on your list, right? Yep. Bump them up. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these are your other things that are going to come down that once you have those, those first big picture things in place, I say you're allowed to take a little break and then work on these next bit of people. So yeah. that's your like hierarchy for when you want to be working on this stuff. Does that make sense? Yep, yep. Okay. So now we know when we want to be booking who. Uh, let's talk about where do we even start when it yeah. comes to, to finding this. And there's really a few different options for you. So that may be good news. That may be bad news. Hmm. I know the first one, that first place that you should go, because it's your second professional that you hired. And a great resource would be to go to your wedding planner. Oh! <laughs> um, yeah. they and I know you're going to jump in with this in a second but like it, you know when you hire a wedding planner they get to know you at a, a very personal level so they can help you make decisions or uh, search for things on your behalf with your best interest in mind mm -hmm. feel me so it really comes to, for me to like, again, broaden it out a bit further is like referrals and recommendations from people, right? And those yep. can come from a few different places. Your planner is going to be the one that should <laughs> do the most legwork when it comes to finding the right fit for you. They should really dive in and find out, you know, what style, what's your budget? What are you looking for? Like, look at your personality and see how that's going to translate into the person you're going to be using. Um, yeah. Like Dan said, that connection with the person is so important and your planner's job Part of that job is matchmaking and putting people together that make a lot of sense and build the right Love team. That. Now, that yeah. said, that doesn't mean that, 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 that your planner's recommendations are necessarily the end all be all, um, yep. but they're also going to help steer you away from who may be to look out for, who doesn't necessarily provide the best overall experience for you. But there's other things too. You can get recommendations from your venue from other vendors you've already hired that you love and just like have this really good vibe with, they are usually great resources to go to and say like, hey, I, like, hey, photographer, you are amazing. Do you know, happen to know any like <laughs> hey, videographers? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like in brackets. Uh, do you happen to know any videographers that have like a similar vibe to you, but like that you work really well with because I want everybody to play nice together? That is a great spot. Yeah, two notes about those two things. One, if you're asking your venue, uh, I know we talked about this in previous episodes, but if you're asking your venue, watch out for those paid lists, right? So there are venues have these big lists where they say, oh, these are the people that we love to work with. Um, and sometimes that's more of an advertisement uh, where people are paying to be on that list than a per, uh, you know personal recommendation. So you can also ask your venue, hey, you know, who I see this list that's awesome. Is there anybody that you particularly like to work for? Just at you, uh, you know, if you're talking with your your a venue coordinator. And the other thing is, is um, yeah, uh, family and friends can be so amazing, right? To talk with those people and say, hey, you know, you got married last year, you got married three years ago. Who are the people that you really love to work with, right? Exactly. But, but, but here's here's what we know, right? Is the, uh, chances are those family and friends 
maybe only planned one or two weddings and went through that process with just that one vendor. So while they may have had a really good experience, they might not have anything else to compare it to. And that's why reaching out to your planner or your venue or the other vendors you're working with, they work in weddings way more consistently than probably your friend or family member who was like, hey, my photographer was really awesome. You should use them, right? Because that's the only experience they have with it. And that's totally fair. On the same side of things, if they had a really negative experience, that's really helpful information too. Too, right totally. because you yep. know that that's so important but when it comes to you as an individual and your friend or family member as an individual chances are you're not the exact same people i'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that you're probably not the exact same people so right. When it comes to building your team, you've got to find the people that are right fit for you. And while your big sister may have had the most amazing photographer and they loved each other and it was this most amazing fit, if you interview that photographer and you don't get those warm and fuzzies, that's totally okay. It's just totally not a fine. Good fit for you, right? And that's yep. Yep. totally okay. Um, but they helped you with a good starting point. You exactly. know, I think that's that that's what it's for. You don't have to use the same person as your yep. friend or your sister or whatever. It's just yep. a good starting point. Exactly. Collecting collecting information. Collecting the info. So Okay, so where where's the other big spots that we got to go to? I mean, I think naturally the next thing I think of is like the online search, right? Yep. Yep. You just look like a mouse. Dan just did like really like typey things, but you look like. <laughs> but um, I started like doing it above my like, microphone. Oh my goodness. See, yeah. this is where our, our Patreon listeners who get the, the video feeds get all these like really fun things. Okay. <laughs> so online, um, I think it's safe to say the two biggest monsters uh, in the online space as far as national, international wedding directories are WeddingWire and The Knot. Yep. Now, WeddingWire and The Knot used to be two separate companies that just – had, you know, you put in what you're looking for, you put in the area you're looking for, and anybody who has, he has paid to be listed on that site is listed up really high. Anybody who is paid less is listed lower. It's this whole thing, um, as many other advertising things online work. But recently, WeddingWire and The Knot have come together, and they are now forming this company called The Knot Worldwide. So we're not really sure at this moment what that means for these two websites. It seems like they're still going to be operating separately. We're not really sure. But Hmm. uh, they're combining efforts on the back end, which I don't know, to me is, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Yeah, so, I mean, Wedding Wire and The Knot are definitely the two big ones that most people think of. But there's a whole bunch of other, I guess you could call them niche websites uh, that are that are definitely worth re- uh, worth noting. Um, that would be things like, uh, you know, Wedding Chicks, uh, Junebug Weddings, Munaluchi Bride. Um, I don't know. What else? Can you think of any other like – Oh, a ton. Style Me Pretty Green Wedding Shoes. Yeah. I, mean, I guess we're thinking about more blogs. Yeah. But, but it's but they're what still it, in there. It's still where people can find things, get inspired, or whatever, and potentially find their wedding pros there a little exactly. bit. Exactly. So if there is a blog that you're naturally drawn to, if you're constantly going to Offbeat Bride, um, yeah. and that is a great place then to look for vendors, whether it is in the listings that they have or just in the weddings and the the stuff that they're sharing, because every time that they share something, all of those vendors that are involved on it are tagged, you know, with links oh. and all that stuff. So those are really great places to look for it. Now I will say that most of those well I would say argue even all of those sites um, in order to be listed on them the company the business has to pay to be on them and as a business you can only pay to be in so many places and while we'd love to be in as many places as possible to like to to earn your business and for you to see us financially that's sometimes really tricky right so just because you see someplace someone somewhere but not someplace else it doesn't mean that oh that vendor isn't allowed to be on the knot or that vendor um you know the wedding wire doesn't like that vendor it's really it's it's honestly all about how much you pay unfortunately to be listed on totally. the sites and that's that's okay but yep. that's how it works yeah one of, one of the other like very quickly things that i want to mention about online also is if if you google things like you know let's talk about philadelphia if you google philadelphia weddings you'll see probably some wedding blogs maybe um you know the the i think philadelphia inquirer has their own section of their their website specifically for weddings that they talk about weddings there's also you know, the magazine Philadelphia Weddings, there's Philly in Love. So there's all these different little niches that you might or, or niche websites specifically for your area that might pop up as well. So if you're in, 
I don't know, the Poconos. If you're in DC, there's probably blogs and and websites specifically for your area too to check to check out. Okay, and while we're talking about the local aspect, I think yep. um, I think we should also talk about bridal shows and these open mm. houses that venues do. Totally. So I have a lot of opinions about bridal shows. <laughs> Me too. Dan, go ahead. Would you like to share? Um, I want you to go first. I don't want to put myself out there first. <laughs> Vulnerability moment. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, I think where we are based out of especially, it feels like there are at least five bridal shows going 100 on. 100 bridal shows. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, at least every weekend is what I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. right? There's always yeah. something going on somewhere. And it's a lot. And this again goes down to um, what I said about online options. A, a business can't pay to be everywhere online. In the same sense, a business can't pay to be everywhere at the bridal shows. So what ends up happening is you have this like weird spattering of different people at different shows. And I don't like the vibe that, excuse me, that some bridal shows give in the sense that we have all these amazing vendors here, especially the big ones, the ones that are really advertising free honeymoon giveaways and tons of prizes and all this stuff because yeah, I guess if the, the most polite way I can say it is you're more likely to find high quality vendors at high quality shows and vice versa. Yeah, I, I think one of the traps that uh, that happens at uh, bridal shows is – uh, well, I, I have a few friends who have done some recently, and they're just saying like, like they're very nice, nice guys, nice ladies, and they want to have like, a, they want to connect with people at the show. But the the vibe at the show is that like people are walking through with blinders on because everybody's just like standing at the front of their booth, attacking them. Hey, come on in, come on, give me this, mm -hmm. give me this, sign up for this, sign up for that. And it's like it's very difficult for somebody like myself, who I love to sit down with people. Like a lot of my meetings are can be hours long because I just, I mean. I get to know couples on a very deep personal level. So that's why I haven't ever done them because it just doesn't work for the way that I, I run my business. So there are plenty of, of, of vendors that are out there who just won't be at bridal shows. Mm -hmm. um, not to say like, I, I know friends who do really well at them, who, who are amazing photographers, amazing videographers, amazing florists and everything. Um, but what would you say uh, uh, bridal shows are good for? A hundred percent. So first of all, they're great for just the experience, right? Like yeah. if you want to oh, go yeah. and grab your mom or your sister or your friends or your whatever and just be like, hey, let's go have like a wedding filled day. That's fun, Woo! right? Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. great time. To plan it around dinner, get manicures, whatever. That said, um, don't expect to book your entire group of people there at the show. First of all, yeah. you don't want to do it. Second of all, it just there, it's not the best representation of that area of, of the vendors they have. And now th that's talking more about the, like the huge shows, not the ones that are like where you're paying to get in and doing all of that. But honestly, I think bridal shows are great for finding your florists, your bakers, stationary artists that are going to do invitations, maybe photo booths, just getting out there and seeing some like maybe unique services that you're like, Oh, that's really cool. And just like interacting with it in the same way that your guests would, that helps to kind of just give you these cool ideas and do all that stuff. And when it comes to your florists and bakers, these are things that you can clearly see their work. You can clearly see or taste the baker's work. Bakers always have samples, which is so much fun. And it's a great way to be like, hey, I really liked the vibe I got from that baker's booth. Yeah. They had their 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 little cakes were so delicious. I loved their the design of them. That to me is like their top of my list right now for who I might want for the bakers. So that's like Love that. It's a great space to find them. But just know not every vendor in that area is at that show by a long shot. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, so now let's let's say we found a couple of different people, mm -hmm. and you start like kind of digging into who they are online, right? Before you make the phone call or whatever, you start digging in. Yeah, you're um, gonna be a creep a little bit. You're gonna stalk. Yeah, yeah, right? and that's okay. Like, like you do your due diligence, right? Like, figure out a little bit who these people are, because again, it's a special day, right? Like, what's it gonna take? Maybe an hour of of you know narrowing it down to your top three to five and then start start saying start googling them start reading reviews that's where we're going to start right let's talk about yeah. let's talk about digging into the reviews and if there's a method that you really like danielle for how to do that um yeah so i'm a big review reader anytime a couple is working with somebody who i haven't yep. worked with before that is kind of where i start i go to their website and i start googling them and finding reviews from past people that they've worked with um Love because it. to me it's a very their way to find out um, 
a, a little bit more about them. So their website's going to, they wrote their website, right? It's going to be talking all about how amazing they are and how wonderful they are. But their reviews will really show you their true colors and in good ways or in bad ways. <laughs> yep. So usually what I find is there is some common thread that will keep coming up and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. So for example, um, if you Google me, you'll see in my reviews that a lot of people will say that I am super fast to respond. Some will even like make up the fact that I've responded to them at six in the morning when I haven't. I'm not up that early, but they think I'm so <laughs> quick to respond to them that they felt like I've responded to them at six in the morning. But so that's a like common thread through mine. Dan, I would imagine you would know this better than me. Yours has to mention your like high energy, bubbly personality, right? Yeah, bubbly personality is probably not the, the term that people use, but like oh, right. definitely Sorry. the uh, – I can tell you flat out in moment of vulnerability, the thing that is is my – my the worst thing that I do is my communication. Um, mm. not And it's good. Like it's still better than I think most people, but like that, what everybody always says is that like I was there through it all. I got to know them. I was very comfortable around them. Um, I had never-ending reservoirs of energy. If something went wrong, I was there to just like reassure people. So it's like – What's kind of interesting is like people always say like, yeah, they love the pictures, but the rest of the four paragraphs that they wrote were about like my being around me and me being around them on the wedding day, not necessarily the photos, which is something that that is, you know, a big part of what I do, mm -hmm. um, which is something you wouldn't necessarily get from my website, even though I'm trying to get it that way or somebody else's website is exactly yeah. what their approach is right is like, exactly. you know. And there, it comes down to if a couple reaches out to me and they're getting married at this beautiful venue that I've never worked at before, I'll immediately dive into the, the reviews. And when I talk to that couple for that first time, I'll say, okay, so I'm seeing from other people that they've had some problems with communicating with the person on site. Are you having that same struggle? Because that's where I come in and I fix all that stuff. I make that super yep. easy for my couples. So yep. that to me is like when you see those common threads that just keep coming up person after person that leaves over his reviews, that's usually telling because there's, there's always that, well, not always, but you might find that like one like terrible, bad review from somebody, right? But yeah, unless but there's multiples of that saying the same thing over and over again, chances are high that that was a one-off situation that there's probably, probably more to the story than what's actually being shared. You know, we always know there's three sides to every story. So those are the ones you want to like see them, maybe bring it up as you talk to them. Like, hey, I saw this one thing. Can you tell me kind of how you handled it or Ooh. what that came about? That's a, that's a big thing. So um, when it comes to reviews – as businesses, we have the opportunity to respond to those reviews, right? Yep. And I think that's also a very telling way as you're going through these reviews to see how a person is responding. So, okay, to the good ones, they're saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to working with you, uh, wishing you so much love and hugs, blah, blah, blah. But the bad ones, the ones that mention, uh, this person was great, but dot, 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 they didn't meet my expectation here, here, here. That's where you want to see how that vendor's responding. Are they being defensive? Yeah. Are they explaining? Are they saying F you? You know, like how how Yikes. are how are they how are they handling mm -hmm. that situation? Because that's really telling also. Because yeah. nobody's perfect. Things happen and mistakes happen and things outside of our control happen and sometimes just bad things happen. But it's yep. how they handle it that makes them that shows their character, right? And shows yep, you, yep. do I want to work with that person? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so after reviews, you start looking at, you start narrowing things down. Next thing, obviously, people are going to consider is what? Price, right? Price. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Oh, uh, it's all about the Benjamins, baby. Right? Isn't that a song? <laughs> I don't da, know. Da, da, da. Think, half the times, I think we make it up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, and so Unless this it's is obviously. Disney. Unless it's Disney, then we all know it word for word, mm, syllable for syllable. Um, okay, so when you look for pricing, there's it's a couple tough, right? things. Yeah, it's it's tough, right? Like you, there's all different ranges. You might see full price list on the website. You might see just a starting price, whatever. Um, and this is something is something that I always wonder about is it's like when you buy a house, right? Like say you're you want a house in the two fifty range, two hundred fifty thousand dollar range. You would you would make your search for $300,000 because there might be a little bit of flexibility and there's other options. Like I'm willing to bet that you, if you found somebody who's just like absolutely amazing, you'd probably pay just a little bit extra for them knowing for the peace of mind or whatever, you can shuck and jive a little bit with your, uh, with your budget shuck and jive. You never heard that one before. No, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you can you can like move things around a little bit and make something happen. Obviously, if your budget is three thousand dollars and the person's eight thousand dollars, there's a little chance that you will will come up to meet that. But you know, just that little bit of wiggle room, you know, give yourself a little bit of flexibility. Okay. Yeah, and and there's also times where the starting or the the pricing is not listed on someone's site at all. And I think the natural thing is to go, oof, can't afford it. If they're not even telling me what it is, I can't afford that, <laughs> right? But right, I don't right. think that's a fair exception, right? Because there are a lot of um, practices um, in this industry that everybody does what's right for them. And for some, it's really tricky to list pricing in a way that's actually helpful, right? Because if you yeah. are a florist, what do, you, what do you put? Pricing starts at $5 for a boutonniere. Well, that's not super realistic, <laughs> right? Because a bouquet right. can cost $200 and that doesn't help you at all. Um, so I, I think there's really different ways to go about it. But I think it's it's one of those things where there's no hurt in asking, um, totally. you know, to just just to see just to see where things fall and and going from there. Yeah, if you inquire with somebody and they're way outside of your budget, there's no harm in that. I know sometimes yes. it feels uncomfortable because, like, you know, if you get a price back and it's just like, oh, wait, that is way more expensive. You know, what do you think I am made of money? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uncomfortable to say, like, oh no, I don't. You're outside of our budget or whatever, and there's no judgment coming from the other side. Like this is, it, it's a, it is a business for us and we get accepted and rejected all the time. You know, right. it's, it's difficult because this is also a very personal, uh, business to be in. Um, but yeah, just sending emails and, and asking for meetings or asking for prices or just a general range or something is not that difficult. It's not that outside that, that unusual is what I meant to say. Right. I'm going to share um, something. Uh, so this happened to me actually twice um, this past month. And this is kind of an example of maybe what not to do. So okay. I had um, uh, two really nice couples reached out to me separately. And um, I had sent them some initial information. Uh, I gather a little bit of information first so I can send them information that's a little bit more accurate to them and to their event because there's a whole different scale of of how we can help and do all that stuff. So I sent them that and it had my starting at prices, which is the lowest really I, I go to depending on what else they want to add for it, right? Yep, so yep. Um, we spent a lot of time together. We had a consultation. We, we went through all of these things and I sent them a proposal that was pretty much right in line with that range that I said they were going to be in. Um, and they came back looking to be um, 70 percent less than what I sent them and that's even much lower than the starting point price that I had and yeah. where it kind of bummed me out and that was their choice and that's how they chose to handle it and they're not bad people for it but what I want to huh. tell you guys is that um if you're going to have a set price in mind that you know you really can't go above that, be honest with it, right? Totally. Because uh. I could have saved that those couples a lot of time by saying, I can't meet you where you need to be. That is totally okay if that's where you want to be. But I know no matter what I do, I can't get there for you. So I'm not the best fit for you, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the other thing I'd have to say is if you have a price that's like kind of in line with where where the person is that you're you're meeting with um, and you say like, hey, this is kind of where we're at. But but you guys are on a great page. That person is probably more willing to try to figure something out because they like you and because you like them and you're on the same page and you're a good fit. They're more willing to say, hey, you know what? We can figure something out. We can I can do this or I can do that rather than just saying you know, being negative about it or being confrontational about it or, exactly. or withholding that and then, you know, just not telling them later. And then all of a sudden they're left saying like, what, wait, I thought we're on the same page and whatever, you know? Right. Communication is so key. We, we say that across the board on all fronts, right? Yep. Um, and I think if any vendor is judging you for what you want to spend on it, then they're just flat out then, right? Not Gone. the best vendor for you. Now, sometimes yep. it comes to, hey, what you're looking for, like the expectations you have don't quite align with the budget you have for it. And that's right. where you either need to, A, change your expectations or B, change your budget for it, right? Those are those yep. are two options that you have, but that's that's kind of what it comes down to. But to me, like Dan said, having like a very honest upfront talk about it helps save time. Like he said, if you have if your budget is three thousand dollars, but what you're looking at costs eight thousand dollars, well, chances are that eight thousand dollars service or product can't come down to three thousand dollars without some major adjustments to the service, or it might just not be able to at all. Right. 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 So. I'm also a big, big advocate, and I want to talk about this for a hot second, of you really get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, 
I think it's easy to, especially when you're diving into the world of weddings, I think it's kind of easy to just compare price to price, thinking things are apples to apples. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of standardization in this industry. Standardization, is that a word? Standardization. That's right. I'll, I'll say it with more confidence. There's not enough standardization in this industry. <laughs> um, but there, there really isn't. There's nothing that tells us what we can or can't include in our packages. So sometimes right. it's really hard for couples to compare things side by side when they're comparing sometimes All over really the different place. things. Yeah. So yeah. really, really dig in and understand what it is that you're paying for. Don't assume one florist is going to provide the same exact service or product as the next florist. Um, because if it isn't apples to apples, you can't compare price to price. Does that make That's sense? Right. That's right. Um, and with the quality um, of people that are out there, there are different ranges and there are people that have less experience are newer to the industry and are therefore charging accordingly and charging a lot less than someone who's been in the industry for a few years and has experience yep. under their belt. But, yep. and there's no right or wrong here, but it's very true in the sense of you get what you pay for, right? Yeah. There is, um, everybody has a budget and everybody, I respect everybody's budget, but when it comes to what you're investing in the day, it, it, I, I don't know how to say this of any other way than you get what you pay for. Does that make sense, Dan? I don't know if you want to elaborate on that, but. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I think we'll just leave it at that. I think we'll okay. have to just leave it at that because uh, we spent a lot of time talking about pricing, which is it's okay, definitely yeah, something yeah, on a lot true. of people's mind. So let's we'll move on. I think I think everybody has enough to chew on. And if you have more questions about pricing or how to approach it, yeah. you know, if you know, hit us up in our Patreon uh, channel, and and we've got a big discussion going on about it. We've got a big discussion going on about it pricing in there. <laughs> Words. I got, I got words. Okay. okay. So Next. You've, you've, you've done your due diligence. You're like trying to figure out price wise. Um, and now you're like, you're going to make that initial contact at some point. You may have already done that when you've reached out about price, but you are needing to reach out to this person. You need to start the conversation. Right. And Dan, yep. you have yep. a great way of looking at this. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So I, I get that most people, Time out. Um, let me just see where I was at when I was writing this. Okay, sorry. Uh, start the conversation how you want to continue the conversation. I love that. Um, believe me, I understand that since most of the people don't know what to ask about a wedding, this is the default of how much. Chances are before you even contact someone, there's a good possibility that you've got an inclination of how much they are. Maybe you saw a number on a message board or on their website and it seemed okay, so you're getting more information. Now is the time to find the warm and fuzzies. That's right, that's right. Um, I just spelled TL over myself. Oh, bummer. Um, <laughs> so I, I actually I actually need to talk through this really quickly. Um, so I think uh, I think that most people say like, okay, well, here's a photographer, here's a photographer. They both sell an album. They both sell an eight by ten. And it's like they just compare those two things and say like, okay, well, how much? Because that's the only question they know to ask, right? But there's a good chance that most people have seen like some of a, a starting point or price or met some somewhere somewhere they they generally know where they're at um so i think it's it's better to start off the warm with the warm and fuzzies no i want to uh, good i i think you should start with this because this okay. sums that's your like lead into okay um okay go for all right it. yeah you know, I think I think the best way to describe this is starting the conversation how you want to continue the conversation, right? Um, so uh, my contact form uh, and my phone number on my website um, are set there because I like to connect with people on a very personal level, and I I I, I have a created an experience that I want to take people through that I know gives a great result at the very end, from the moment they inquire with me all the way through to the you know the moment I deliver their album. Um, so before you just like send an email uh, by not filling out the con – well, let me take a step back. By contact form is it, it, like I, I'm trying to search for some things that like find some common ground, right, that that allow me to take a, a step into your lives uh, and understand you guys already at a, at a deep level. So when we talk on the phone, I know what um, – uh, I, I know to ask some questions and things like that. So um, I think most most people – 
when they are are going through filling out contact forms and writing emails and whatever, they they just say the first words out of their mouth, which is how much is it? Get back to me. Thank you. Um, and I think generally speaking, like people do that because, you know, this photographer has an album, that photographer has an album. This photographer sells an eight by 10 print. That's a photographer sells an eight by 10 print. So all they know to ask is like, well, how much? Because they think everything is, is all the same, but it's not Things are not all the same. Um, so I would say is, is generally speaking, you probably have some idea unless there's literally nothing anywhere on any website ever, um, that says like a, a, a starting point or whatever, even, even listings on some, you know, those big websites will have like $2 signs or $3 signs or $4 signs, depending on how expensive they are. So there's a good chance that you've got some inclination that if you're writing to them, you could probably afford them unless it's a really big surprise. So what I would say is always start with the warm and fuzzies. Start with just that personal connection. It's time to find those warm and fuzzies. And then if something is really crazy and they're way outside of your budget, respectfully say, sorry, you're way too far out of our budget, move on. But there's a good chance that you're, they're probably inside your budget. So I'd say, Start with the warm and fuzzies first mm -hmm. and then go from there. You feel me? I, I can't tell you how much more excited I am when I get an email from somebody where they've just shared a little bit about themselves. Like this is, my name is Katie and my fiance is Ryan and we're so excited. We're going to be getting married on this date, at this place, and it's just so beautiful there. And like we're just, we just really want to have this really great time. So we thought we'd read out to you and see if you could help us somehow. Looking forward to hearing from you. Boom. And that's like, that's not, it's not super, um, you know, detail heavy, it's not really long, but it just gets me excited. It gets me more excited than the ones that say, how much do you charge? Boom. It's like, right. aw, not right. that that's a bad question or a wrong no. question. Right. I think, um, so my contact form has a couple of like personal questions and sometimes people are, you know, they're, they're concerned about maybe sharing some of their stuff. Like one of the questions I have is, you know, who's the most important person to you and why? You know, and I love like, I love seeing people's responses to that. I read every single thing and it's, it gives me a good talking point, um, as to like, uh, like who this person is. And when people don't fill in like some of those questions, even just a basic answer, skip past everything, put their name, email, and, and just like, Hey, send me your pricing. It just kind of like deflates me a little bit. Right. Um, because I, like I said, I designed this experience a around, you know, the best possible way I can deliver something amazing to you. Um, and I, I like it a little bit. It gives me the warm and fuzzies when people play my game a little bit, you know, and to clarify that a little bit more, I don't mean, you know, game, but I mean like, uh, that this is, this is the way that I know how to serve my clients best. And, uh, you know, I've, I've gone through this process with, you know, uh, hundreds of other clients at this point or other couples at this point. And I just know that this is how, uh, I keep my couples happy by like knowing who they are on a very deep level. Um, and, and starting off on the right foot. That's how I know to do it. So yeah, that makes sense. yeah it's a little different, a little untraditional, but, um, but yeah, it's all good. I think, I think what it comes down to is just like finding those, um, those ways to share a little bit more about yourself, but also from a practical standpoint, standpoint, don't forget to share where you're getting married or the dates. Yeah. Those are important things too, you know. And and if you if you don't know what else to share, just think, you know, what would you say if you're like reaching out to somebody that you have an interest in that you want to become a little bit of a friends with, you know, like yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. look at it that way. So yeah. So moving on, you've like reached out and maybe you've had like some really good exchanges. Now it's probably time to set up. Um, a consultation <laughs> um, to, to, to interview them, right? And interview yeah, is a yeah. really like harsh word. Um, and I say it's probably not best to think of it as like an actual interview, but just having a really good, honest conversation with that person. The totally. same much, the same way as as you want to learn about them, they want to learn about you too, right? Yep. You want to make it sure is. that you're a good fit for yep. for their process, for their for their product, for their service, for whatever it is they want to provide for you. This is your chance to like get to know each other and, like I said, just have a good, honest conversation. Yep, and don't be afraid to ask them some questions about who they are, what they like to do, what what they think their ideal client is, things like that. But also, you know, some of the things about their specific approach, you know. How do you work on a wedding day? What's your vibe? Um, you know, are you know, are there any other professionals that you really like to work with? Um, things like that, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, you, I actually tell a, a 
you know, a lot of people this, and and maybe it's the bad businessman in me coming out because you're supposed to go for like the hard clothes and whatever. But it's like you should meet with as many photographers as possible. Um, not like an insane amount, you know, but like you should meet with a bunch of different photographers. You should meet with, uh, you know, a couple different planners, a couple different florists, caterers, whatever, because, um, the first thing I said in this episode is that you're creating a team of people who are going to take care of you on your wedding day. And you're the only one who's going to know that this, this relationship, this connection works, Mm -hmm. you know? So sometimes, sometimes you've got to see a couple of people to understand what you like and what you don't like. You know what I mean? Think of it if you were buying a house, right? Chances are high that you are, um, you know, going to look at more than one house. Unless that first house you see just crosses everything off your list and just gives you every bit of good vibes. Even still, I would say still go look at maybe another house just to make sure if you're looking for your perfect wedding gown, right? Hmm. Chances are high you may put on a ton of different dresses just to find that one that fits or you may put on that first one and it's perfect but still put on one more just to make sure that no this is really what i want and this really is what's best for me yep just a little dub check um and we've got a bunch of a bunch of episodes that you guys can go back to and check take a look at uh on different questions to ask and just how to dive into this a little bit more um so two that i know of off the top of my head were uh, episode 24 questions to ask your photographer videographer band and dj a lot in that episode um and episode 47 um how to choose your wedding photographer it's one yeah. of my favorites. We also did one episode 34 where we did questions to ask your wedding venue. Um, mm. So if you're really yep. early in the stage on that, I've got a future episode planned on questions to ask your planner, which I'm really Love excited that. for. But really, yep. it just comes down to and like you you want to get to know them right anything that isn't super clear ask them to explain it further that is totally okay if you don't understand anything dan and i are always about telling you guys we want you to make educated decisions decisions that you feel a plus confident in and just that's how you do it is asking these questions and um just a shameless plug here i actually have an etsy (laughs) store um with a full bundle of worksheets for all questions asked. I think if there's like 14 different worksheets, um, you can buy them individually or you can buy them as like one big bundle. Um, yep. The bundle itself is actually already discounted over 50% off. Um, but I'm going to be giving um, a little extra discount to our Patreon supporters. Um, I will be posting a Aww. code in the, um, in, in the on the Patreon page when this episode goes up so that any of our Patreon supporters can save even more money because we appreciate you guys. I like sharing that information. Um, So yeah, we've got a little something extra for you, but I'll put a link either way to my Etsy store in the show notes for this episode. But honestly, as you're talking with people, it goes down to going with your gut on something, how something feels, Um, keeping an open mind that if somebody is doing something a little bit differently, that doesn't make it bad or good you just want to like really understand their process and really understand how they do what they do and what you can expect from it right no assumptions um and honestly it comes down to if something doesn't feel right um it probably isn't if something feels too good to be true there's probably Probably a catch right like it just it's just all those things that come down to it now might be a situation where it really is too good to be true and it's just this amazing thing that you're going to get but if you have these little like alarms going off in your gut, try to listen to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the last step is just making your choice. Yeah. I so, love you. Yeah. Fuck right. my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> I, most vendors, I would say, as you talk with them, and if they don't explain this, you can ask like, hey, if we, if we want to move forward, what's our next step? It's a great yep. way to say like, we'd love to work with you. Um, good to go. I will say there is a thing happening. Dan, have you heard about ghosting? Uh, I think yep. it's like even on the like dating sites and stuff. But so ghosting is when um, specifically in the wedding industry, a couple will reach out to a vendor and at any point throughout the process, they just <laughs> stop responding. Disappear. Yeah, yep. they completely disappear. And it's 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 not necessarily great for that person that is spending time trying to reach out and be like, hey, are you still interested? You know, hey, I sent you that information. Did you have questions on it? It is totally okay as we've said previously in this episode to say yeah we we looked it over we talked about it unfortunately it's just it's just not going to work out or um we've ended up choosing something else all of those things as long as you handle it respectfully and relatively politely so much better than just ignoring the person's communication with you yeah right yeah yeah yep Uh, i mean 
I think that goes anything from, you know, emailing back and forth a couple times and then all of a sudden stopping to you've met with that person, your uh, you've met with a couple of so let's say photographers, you met with three or four photographers and you're only going to choose one. Right. When you make yeah. that choice, I would say even if it's a copy and paste email, thank you so much. You were super sweet. We loved your work. We went with somebody else, though. We wish you all the best. Boom. Let yes. those other people know, you know, it's it would take nearly seconds to do it. Um, right. and it's just a very nice common courtesy and you'll be met with, you know, well wishes generally. And, um, and it's just exactly. nice. It's good. Yeah. And just as much, if you think about it like this, just as much as you appreciate a response from them, um, mm -hmm. in, in a situation, they, they, th those vendors appreciate one from you as well, even if it's just to say no thanks. Um, yep. You know, treat others as you wish to be treated. That's like our a golden rule, Love right? That. Yep. Um, so that is that is something that I urge you guys. As as awkward as it feels to like maybe respond, it sucks way more to just be ghosted as a vendor than for you to say yeah. no thanks, all good, right? Yeah. Yep. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Nice. Good episode.